we're going to talk about various cartridge configurations. We're going to talk about belted cartridges versus non-belted cartridges. Numerous people have asked me to talk on this subject. I've chambered many hundreds and hundreds of rifle barrels in all types of cartridge configurations. And that pretty much covers most situations, belted or non-belted situations. Ask me whether there was an advantage to one over the other. Well, I don't know if, if there's necessarily an advantage. I've never, I've never bought in entirely to the belt on the cartridge. For one reason, it changes the aspect of things for a reloader. You're going to find absolutely no difference in anything if you're not a reloader. If you shoot factory ammunition, I guess you can kind of forget about any different aspects here. The belt, when you size cartridge cases so that they fit properly in your chamber, the belt is basically an abrupt shoulder designed for better head spacing. Oh, really? It doesn't create any better head spacing than an unbelted case. And I'm going to point out why. As a rule, see, belted cases, a head space gauge, measures from the face of the gauge to the lip of that shoulder 220 thousandths on our say 300 Winchester 7 Magnum belted cartridges. Most cartridge brass measures more like about 5 thousandths, maybe 6 thousandths less than 220. So how can we headspace more precisely? We can't, unless the brass, the brass has got to have some clearance. And somewhere around two or three thousandths will give you the necessary clearance. And that's pretty much ideal. But if we've got cartridge brass that's short by five or six thousandths, if you load very many cartridges over time, you're going to find is that as this brass might happen to grow in your work, you're using up there fairly warm charges, that case will start to grow ahead of the belt. And because the way that dies are made and the way that everything has to work, what you're going to see is you're going to see a secondary belt being formed on the case just ahead of the other belt. That's kind of a poor situation. For one thing, it tells you that you're loading a bit too warm. You're not paying attention to miking your cases when you're loading and so forth. And that's kind of where the problem lies there. The other aspect is belted cases because of that lip, that belt extends beyond the rest of the wall of the case, the body of the case. It is and can be at times, not necessarily, a feed problem. So there's those aspects. When you size a rimless case, you don't have that kind of condition. Your cartridge case expands to fit the chamber and the head of the case, just ahead of the extractor groove of the case. There's no interference there. There's not a lip. But you've got to understand in my conversation here one main thing concerning belted versus non-belted. There still has to be some clearance of that brass, virgin brass, to fit in chambers cut properly to proper minimum dimensions. That clearance ideally should be around two to three thousandths. And when I chamber a barrel, 
I have cartridge brass here, invariably, that I check against my headspace gauges. And checking with my micrometers, I determined, and determined many, many, many years ago when I chambered my first rifle barrels, that that case goes in the chamber and is normally around two to three thousand shorter in the chamber than the amount that the headspace gauge protrudes in the chamber. It's a manufacturing aspect and it's a necessary evil. We've got to have some clearance. But we don't need sloppy chambers and we don't need chambers that are oversized. So I'm hoping that this rectifies some of these aspects. Ideally, let's say for instance 30 out 6 type cases. If we have an actual chamber, the actual dimensions of the chamber where the case expands back what we call the expansion ring on the case, expands to fit the wall of the chamber. If that chamber is somewhere around 468 and a half to 469, we've got an ideal situation. We've got prints out there that call for 471. Well, that's a real sloppy situation because a lot of our cartridge brass in 30 06 is 464 to 465 as it comes right out of the bag or the box when you buy it. That allows more expansion, a sloppier situation. That creates somewhat of a sizing situation. It creates a greater amount of pressure to be able to size that case in the die with chambers that are bigger. Now we're going to shift to the Magnum case. Ideally, right ahead of that belt, that, that expanded case where you measure it, where it's expanded to fit the wall of the chamber, just slightly ahead of the belt, about a sixteenth of an inch ahead of the belt, that case should measure probably no more than about 514. Right in there, somewhere between about 5, 512, 513, 514. I've measured chambers that are 518, 520, 522, 523, you know, on factory rifles and one thing or another chambered for magnum cartridges. This is where some of the issues issues apply, and this is part of why people have asked, what is the advantage? Well, it creates a problem if the chamber's oversized, but everything done properly, loading properly, in actual use, I don't think that you're going to encounter an issue that stands out for you shooting a magnum cartridge with a belt compared to a cartridge without a belt.